Welcome to Ancestral Wisdom, where the wisdom of our past guides our future. Today I'd like to talk about Hercules. One of the more well-known figures from mythology, <laughs> uh, Hercules figures into my own uh, spiritual and emotional and, and motivational complex uh, quite extensively. And in fact, on the altar that I use for my meditations and spiritual contemplations and, uh, and libations, Hercules is actually at the center of the altar. And, well, why is that? Why, why would Hercules play such a prominent role? Well, why is it that Hercules has become one of the most beloved figures from Greek mythology? There are more Hercules movies than there are for any other god or demigod. There's more, more Hercules TV shows, and Hercules is in our pop culture more than anyone else in Greek mythology. Well, interestingly, which figure from Norse mythology is in our pop culture more than any other figure? Well, Thor. And there's a bit of a connection between the two. Hercules traditionally carries a, a club, even if he doesn't in some of the modern renditions. Uh, a club is what he usually carries. It's the first thing he tried to use to knock out that Nemean lion. Or was it the bow and arrow? I forget. <laughs> Before he had to use his bare hands. But Thor and Hercules have that similarity, that club, that hammer, the, the symbol of putting order to the chaos, of slaying monsters, of slaying giants. They have that connection. And that's so important to what it means to be human, to put the order to the chaos, to slay the giants, to try to make the good triumph, the good outside in the world triumph in the world, and the good within you triumph over the darkness within you. And so Hercules has that aspect. The other interesting thing about Hercules and and Thor, the other connection, is that they're both fallible. They, they both have flaws. And one of those flaws is rage. Thor is known to be very easily angered, and Hercules uh, can also has a, an instance in which he falls into a rage. Uh, different stories give different reasonings for that. Um, he falls into a rage and, and harms his family and therefore must go and find out how he can right that which he has done wrong in his life. And well, what happens, he, he rights the wrong by going and becoming a hero, basically, by undergoing 12 labors. And similarly to the video uh, in which we were discussing who exactly Odysseus was, and I can link that in the description below, well, why 12? Numbers are very important in the mythology, as we've discussed before. Um, and it seems to me that Hercules had to undergo 12 labors for a, a specific reason. And Hercules was flawed. He spends his much of his life laboring in order to make that wrong something that is justified by the, the deeds that he's doing. Um, there are some complications that, uh, mostly because of who's ordering him to do those things, but it, I don't think that really matters in this case. Uh, and he's proving himself to be part of this, this battle of life as a force of good. The other interesting thing about Hercules is that in the end, when he dies, he becomes a god. 
Now, if you've been watching some of our, our previous, uh, my previous videos, the concept of trying to achieve divinity through using the gods as models is at the core of what Asatru and, and paganism really is. And so Hercules, to me, is the prime symbol of someone who is flawed, someone who goes through great lengths to prove his worth in the world, and then through proving that worth, actually becomes a god. We're all half divine. We're all demigods. We're all as Hercules was originally. And it's our job to use the myths and to use the stories to become more divine. And so that's what Hercules means to me. And when I meditate or I pray as, as Hercules being the main focus of uh, my altar, I'm reminded of that fact. I'm reminded that as I go out in the day that I should leave it better I should leave the world better than I found it I should leave myself better than I found myself that morning and I should be one step closer to the divine side of my soul and one step further away from the baseness that could also be part of being human. <sighs> it's a beautiful day. So, as I as I chant our uh, our customary closing, maybe I'll I'll pan the camera around to the beautiful sky and the clouds and the shade and the trees that are surrounding us. He who rules through his eyes Hans who's right okay nas Ye po on jo hagalas Now this is a You are the throhel gods, though we low he was, but can no way he woe man us. Lagusing was the gods, oh, 